Hi everyone, so for today we'll be working on a solution for week 6, cash. So do note that this is the solution for week 6 problem set. So if you're actually at week 1, working on week 1's problem set for cash, do watch my other video linked in the description below. So in this problem set, what we want to know is that for any given amount of change owed, what is the least number of coins that we can give? So the coins that we will have will be quarters, which are 25 cents each, dimes, which are 10 cents each, nickels, which are 5 cents each, and pennies, which are 1 cent each. So how do we usually calculate the number of coins per denomination to give? So in this example, what we will use is 41 cents as the amount of change owed. So this is something that many of us do almost every other day, but for this problem set, we'll actually be breaking down the logic and steps as to how we calculate the number of coins per denomination to return. So to calculate the number of quarters, we will actually take 41 cents minus 25, and since the balance of 16 cents is less than 25 cents, we will move on to issue a dime. And since the balance is less than 10 cents, we will move on to issue a nickel. And we will end by issuing one penny. And the total number of coins that we will need to give back is 4. So before we move on, just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. And do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. This really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And it will actually bump up this video to others who are looking for this walkthrough as well. So moving on, what will be the structure of our code? So we actually need to prompt the user to key in the amount of change owed. And this must be greater than 0. Then, we must calculate the number of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So let's work on the first step. So do note that for this problem set, we will actually be focusing more time comparing the differences between C and Python syntax. And this is because we've already covered the solution in C in the earlier video that I did. So if you have not already watched that, watch the video linked in the description below before you move on for this one. So one tip that really helped me for this particular week's problem set solution is actually to refer to lecture 6 notes for a very helpful compilation of Python syntax. And I believe that it will be very helpful for you as well. So for this step, what we need to do is to get the user to key in a number that is greater than 0. So in C, this is actually what we have worked out where we actually used a do while loop. So this means that we will keep running the prompt for the user to key in the input as long as the input received is less than or equals to 0. So what will this look like in Python? So according to the lecture 6 notes, it states that while there is no do while loop in Python, we can actually achieve the same effect with while true. So this is the sample that they gave us in the notes where the parts in blue are what we need to change to suit our cash solution. So referring to this example in particular, while true means that whatever comes after that will actually run perpetually unless a certain condition is met. So while true, n equals to get in height where we actually prompt the user for the height. So in this example, as long as height is greater than zero, we use break. We will actually exit the loop as we have met the condition that we want where height must be more than zero, right? So since the height key in is greater than zero, we can actually break to exit the loop and move on with the rest of the program. So changing this to fit our solution for cash, while true means that whatever come after that will run perpetually. So while true set equals to get float change. So why do we use get float? So this is because the user will actually key in a value and it's a high chance that there will be some decimals involved. So that is why it's considered a float value. So as long as sense is greater than zero, we will use break to move on to the rest of our program. And now that we have our value for change, we can actually multiply it by 100. So we can actually start calculating the number of coins per denomination that we need to return to the user. So to recap, the denominations of coins that we have is 25, 10, 5 and 1 for quarters, dimes, nickels and pennies respectively. So if the change key in is $2.18, then we will actually need to convert this by multiplying it by 100 to be 218. So we can divide it by 25, 10, 5 and 1 more easily. So let's write our program for this. So first what we need to do is that we actually need to import from the CS50 library, get float. Then we will use while true. And then we will prompt the user to key in the amount of change owed. And this will actually be a float. And if the user keys in of change amount that is greater than zero, then we will use break to exit the loop and move on, where we will multiply the cents key in by 100. And at the same time, we will also just declare count as zero, so that actually represents the number of coins that we will give back to the user. So moving on, let's now calculate the number of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So taking the example when a change owed is 68 cents, so as we had talked about this in our earlier video that we worked out in week one, as long as the change owed is greater than 25, we can actually issue a quarter. So this means that the balance change owed that we need to work with is 43. And again, since it's greater than 25, we can issue another quarter. And now with the balance being owed is 18, we actually cannot issue any more quarters and we need to move on to issuing a dime. So to summarize, as long as cents owed is greater than or equal to 25, we can issue a quarter. 
and we'll need to do two things, which is to update the count that we have of the number of coins and also to update the value of cents. So let's put this in the program. So I'll just label this section to be number of quarters that we are going to be calculating. So as long as the cents value as we discussed is greater than or equals to 25, we will update our cents value accordingly and we will also issue a quarter and we will increase our count by one. And yeah, that's pretty much how you do that for quarters. So just by looking at this alone, I'm pretty sure you can move on for the rest of the sections yourself for the dimes, nickels, and pennies. So do give that a shot before we move on to the later part of this video. Okay? So moving on for dimes, nickels, and pennies, and continuing from the previous example where the amount of change owed is 18 cents. So since this is greater than 10, we can issue a dime. Right? And then now since our balance cents is owed, we cannot issue a dime, but we'll issue a nickel. And then we'll finish off by issuing 3 pennies because our remaining cents is actually 3. Right, so as long as cents is greater than or equals to 10, we can issue a dime. Greater than 5, we can issue a nickel. And greater than 1, we can issue a penny. And as we do this, we will continue to update the count of the number of coins that we are issuing in total. Alright? And yeah, so before we move on to the last part of the program, if you found this video helpful so far, do remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So finishing this off in the program, let's move on. We will need label our next section. So number of dimes to be issued again as long as cents is greater than 10. We will issue a dime. So we will actually just update the cents value and we will update the count. Again, number of nickels. While cents is greater than or equals to 5, we will again update the cents value and update the count value. And again for number of pennies. And yeah, there's a typo here. So do note this is for number of pennies. And as long as it's greater than or equals to 1, then we will actually just update the cents value and count. So finally, we will just print the total number of coins that we'll be returning. And yeah, let's give it a shot. So we'll just save and compile this. So I'll test it first, right, with some invalid input. So if I key in a string of words, if I key in a zero value, it continues to prompt. So now let me try to key in a proper value. Let's try um, 41 cents, number of coins owed is 4. If the change owed is 4.2, the number of coins is 18. And lastly, if the change owed is actually $23, the number of coins owed will be 92. And yep, there you go. So this is actually the solution for week 6 cash, where we've actually gone through it previously, but now we're doing it in Python. Okay? Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.